Yo, what's going on guys, your friend host here, Connor X Crash. So it's been over a week now since the reveal of Sonic X Shadow Generation, so I finally gathered my thoughts and opinions on the upcoming remaster. Now, you guys know, I'm a bit of a Sonic fanboy, and I've been for a very long time. I'll always do my best to be there to support the blue blur, but that doesn't mean that I'm not not, or wait, or not not, not I mean like not not not. You know what I mean. There has gotta be some criticism. I haven't felt at ease about our Sonic remaster since the release of Sonic Colors Ultimate, but maybe that's changed this time. I'm not getting my hopes up just yet, but I'll say it now before I forget it later. This game has massive potential. There's potential not only to improve a tiny bit of Sonic Generations, but also expand so much of what we know of Shadow the Hedgehog as well as the villains, his character, and his story. They could also add to Sonic Generations with even more content to enjoy. I mean, there's already tons of content to explore in the base game, but if they're gonna remaster this game out of all of the others, why not throw in a couple of new features that bring a stage or two from the 3DS? Either way, I'm still very excited for yet another release of the Sonic franchise, even if it is a port. I mean, it is the year of Shadow the Hedgehog after all. So if you're excited to see even more about Sonic X Shadow Generations and you happen to enjoy the video, be sure to give that like the good old knee slapper! I don't know why I just did that, that's kind of like an, uh, isn't that like a Scottish, uh, British thing? I don't really know if that is, but and subscribe if you'd like to see even more Sonic and Nintendo content as well for the channel. With that being said, since I've already seen the trailer last week during the live stream when I was out from surgery, um, why don't we just go ahead and jump straight into an uh, analysis of this trailer, shall we? So before we dive into an uh, actual analysis, I just want to watch the trailer one more time, so just so we can get a feel for what we're looking at here, and watching this trailer back again. Um, again, I want to point out right now, I'm not seeing much of a difference in the graphics of the base game. Like seriously, you can notice like some tiny minute details, which I'll get into later in the video, but as far as I can see, there's not really much of a difference in terms of the graphics. It looks like basically the same base game running in Hedgehog Engine 1, and I I it just really doesn't look like much of a difference, but this part... Again, last week, it may not seem like I was showing that much excitement last last week in my reaction, but this came out of nowhere. I wasn't expecting this. I thought the Sonic and Shadow game that was leaked um, last year was going to be something completely different, not this. And then, just this gameplay, like, this is obviously Hedgehog Engine 2, which again makes me think, and Doom, and Doom coming back as well. Like, it seems like Sonic Team is actually pulling out all the lore that we've forgotten, and this is just some Doctor Strange stuff right here. But, yeah, there's just so much happening into this trailer, we're gonna dissect, dissect into it right afterwards. And the return of Westopolis as well is insane. And the Bio Lizard boss level, um, which is also, I believe, in Sonic, uh, the 3DS version of Sonic Generations, I believe. And that's pretty much it, so let's just go ahead and dive straight into this analysis now. So first, I want to go ahead and analyze um, this first part of the trailer where we see the base game and stuff, just so I can see if there's any of my new differences. I'll be doing comparisons later on in the video with the lighting and the shading, because that's why I seem, that's what seems to be like the biggest differences. But in terms of graphics, I'm not... Again, this is pixelated and blurred and compressed for the trailer, so we're not going to be seeing the exact tiny details of the upscaling if they did upscale the textures. But, um, we aren't going to be seeing too much of a difference in terms of... Keep in mind that this video is being played right now in 4K. Not the video you're watching, but, like, the video that I hear that we're reacting to is being played in 4K. So, again, the compressed visuals aren't really helping much, and the 4K option doesn't really do anything. So, again, what we're getting is what, what we're seeing is what we get until we actually get our hands on the game in the fall. But, yeah, pretty much here. It looks like the exact same game based in Hedgehog Engine 1. And I jumped back into the game earlier today, um, just so I could get a taste. Like, get, at least get a new... I feel, again for like how the controls, the mechanics, and the graphics and visuals. And again, this looks like just the same exact game with no differences. So, um, I won't- I just wanted to go over that real quick. I'll go over the Sonic Generation stuff later on what I want to see, um, for a remaster. If they decide to add more to the base game, I'm guessing it's just gonna be the- this game copy-pasted with no extras, no additional features like the Colors Ultimate. Again, I don't want this game to be another Colors Ultimate situation, but this is being made in-house at Sonic Team, and they aren't gonna be- there's not gonna be any screw-ups this time. They could still add on some extra features that quality of life improvements, if you know what I mean. Also, I just love how like Shadow just walks, bolt, waltzes in here like he's a badass. And then classic, classic Sonic's over here is wondering like what the hell is going on between these two bozos. I just want to say right now, I feel so bad for classic Sonic considering the fact that all the attention that was on him for generations in the first place is going to be shifted all the way to Shadow. I actually feel bad for classic Sonic on so many levels. Like this dude is about to get 
completely swept out of the image on and Sonic X Shadow Generations. It, like his 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 time to shine is gone at this day. This is Shadow's year, no longer classic Sonic. I will say, I will say, props again to Mars animation with the, with these animations. Like seriously, this is like top tier quality. Honestly, Marza, hands down, best animators. Changed my mind. And this awesome badass shot of Shadow, and then Doom's eye right there. Like that shot right there. That is just pure cinema. That is awesome. That I like how they're reminiscing with like Doom and how Doom's blood is is like intertwined with Shadow's blood as well. I like how they're game down to those exact details, even in the trailer. This isn't even gameplay. This isn't even in game. This is the trailer, and they're depicting this with the just the, the cinematic trailers. I mean, that's just that's just awesome that they're going down to that exact detail. That's out. That's fantastic. Cosmic Fall, Final Rush. Glad it's great to see those stages come making a return here. And then um, I, I'm try I'll try and do frame for frame. I'll try and do my best to do frame for frame. But so we can see so we can see Shadow uses his usual abilities. We can see the chaos control effect here. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. Teleportate. Hey, uh, what? Hold on. Okay. Oh, wait. Is this the home? Uh, I wonder if this is the homing attack or if this is just the normal chaos control ability. Because if this is a, if this is like a new ability with chaos control, that would be sick, but I think it might. I think I'm going a little bit ahead of myself here. I think it is just the chaos control, but uh, I mean, sorry. I think this is just the homing attack. I think I'm getting a little bit ahead of myself, but if this is if this is part of his new abilities with the chaos control, that'd be pretty sick. That's all I'm gonna say. Right here is just the great shot as well of Shadow kicking whatever this big piece of metal is. It's also a higher definition uh, screenshot that was uploaded to PlayStation's blog. And then Doom making a return. Honestly, he's looking good. <laughs> Doom's eyes look. Doom's eyes looking pretty good. So um yeah, the, the amount of detail on Doom right there. The amount of detail on him is is insane right there. That is just just with the indentations on his tentacles or on his eye or just like that like. They're really going all out with the fidelity in the Shadow expansion. Um, I just hope that's the same for the base game. I really don't think it's going to be that it really looks like Hedgehog Engine 1. But yeah, they're really going to great lengths with Hedgehog Engine 2. And this is this is looking great so far. I mean, there are a couple of like graphic glitches, graphical glitches here and there that you can notice within the trailer. But again, this is probably very, very early in development. We're probably going to get a better glimpse of the final product probably around when we get that Sonic Central this summer. I maybe just I'm, I might just be thinking ahead right now, but I really do have good hopes for this. This honestly does look really, really good, and actually uh, has massive potential. Absolutely massive potential. And then here just looks like like Shadow's literally on them shrooms right now, just like Jim Carrey Robotnik. Like literally, he looks like this is this is literally something you would see stripped straight out of Doc, like Doctor Strange. Like he's on he's literally like this is this is some wacky crap right here, dude. Like oh my goodness, this is crazy. My question, though, is that since we do know that part of Black Doom's blood is intertwined with Shadow's blood, that's how, you, Dr. That's how um, Gerald Robotnik brought Shadow to life in the first place, I'm curious as to if that's what's going on here with the um, with um, the environments here. Is that bra Shadow's brain's getting messed with with, sh with uh, Black Doom's blood? Like, I, I, feel, I have the feeling that Black Doom is somehow still alive, or this is just part of the um, Generations timeline, which I'll get into later on in the video. But <clears throat> I'm wondering if Black Doom is somehow still alive and he's messing with Shadow's brain and what Shadow is interpreting with his vision. I, I wonder if that's something that could be happening right now. That That is just speculation. I don't know if that's true or not, but if that is true, that would be pretty wild if that's the direction they took. But yeah, it looks like it looks like the beginning of it, or it looks like some of the majority of it is gonna be taking place in Westopolis or around the events of like the Shadow of the Hedgehog game. I hope it's not just um, based around the Shadow of the Hedgehog game back in 2005. And it's just, a, I mean, again, I would love to see more elaboration on Shadow's story on the arc with Mario Robotnik and the events that happened there. And again, here with um, the, the story and the events that happened in Westopolis. But I would like to see a little bit more on the other events of Shadow's story, kind of like with Mephilus and stuff. I'm going to get into that later in the video as well. But yeah, it's good to see at least that they are revisiting Westopolis. They're revisiting these old locations that um, they haven't revisit, haven't mentioned or even brought up until just now. Like, it seems like in recent years, they've been digging up a lot of the lore. And I really do respect that. And then these stages look sick. Um, floating buildings, uh, honestly, the attention to detail here is great. Like, again, I hope these phys the physics for these stages also aren't just, like, the cyberspace physics that we had in Frontiers, because those physics were terrible, um, for the base game. Thank goodness for modders. Yeah, they didn't feel comfortable to control in the cyberspace stages for Frontiers, so... Hopefully they fix that. We got more of that chaos control ability here as well. And then we're here. We got the bio lizard fight. Bio lizard is looking great, right? By the way. Oh, and right here we got the chaos spear as well. So there's an ability we're gonna be seeing in the game as well. Again, I know you guys have probably already seen this trailer, but I'm actually gonna analyze this for the first time right now. So it is awesome that we are gaining these abilities, making a comeback right now in Shadow's um, move set. That's awesome. It's incredible to see. 
and just the the amount of detail in this shot right now like all the bubbles um <laughs> whatever the hell is going on inside a bio lizard it is really um awesome to see these minute details that we've seen in low polygons in the dreamcast era finally being re like ultra 4k upscaled you know absolutely like you know it's awesome to see these um old bosses making a comeback and bio lizard yeah bio lizard is looking fantastic and uh, again this is the year of shadow like this is uh, this is really exciting to see um Sega bringing back um, Shadow the Hedgehog back into the light, and that's really awesome. It just sucks that just classic sh Sonic's gonna be just shoved out of the picture entirely. That's just that's um that's that's kind of a, a douche move. <laughs> so let's talk about Sonic Generations itself for a moment. Sonic Generations defined the boost formula in the Sonic series and perfected what Sonic Team first attempted back at Unleashed. Sure, there are a few things that still need work, but it nailed down the feeling of you running at the speed of sound. Sonic Frontiers evolved that into something. That's good, but there's lots of room for improvement. Sonic Generations, at the time, was the best that Sonic had ever felt to control. Classic Sonic made his comeback debut in Generations with the return of full 2D platforming and the Genesis era of Sonic. Personally though, I've never been as much of a fan of 2D Sonic as other fans are. I'm mostly a sucker for the 3D Sonic gameplay as it is what I grew up with in the mid-2000s, and Sonic Unleashed was my first Sonic game. Actually, that explains a lot, doesn't it? Even though I wasn't a big fan of the classic stages, I'll admit that they were very fleshed out and well made. Overall, Sonic Generations managed to create a great mix between the classic and modern eras of the franchise and is still one of the best Sonic games to date. The designs and layouts for the remastered levels were memorable and had a lot of depth to them for the different paths you could take to the amount of detail put in the environments. It truly is a celebration of Sonic the Hedgehog's past, present, and future. With that being said, let's talk about this remaster that we needed but didn't need. This is a Super Mario 3D World plus Bowser's Fury scenario. There's no doubt about that. I'm just curious as to whether these are two separate games being bundled as one, or if they're actually just one whole game in Hedgehog Engine 2. I'm doubtful on that second opinion. I'll say this at least. This looks like the same game in Hedgehog Engine 1. It's not that I don't have anything against Sonic Generations being ported. I think it's a fantastic game. Like, seriously, like, no contest. It's a fan incredible game. I just think that if you're going to call it a remaster, they do something to make the visuals pop more. Don't get me wrong, Sonic Generations graphics and visuals still hold up to this day. I just think it could have used a little reshade is all. Maybe I just can't see the tiny details of the ad with my short side eyeballs, but I guess we'll come up with the verdict once we get our hands on it this fall. Now, if we really wanted to go into comparisons between the original and the remaster, well, you're in luck. Curiosity got the better of me and I decided to boot up Sonic Generations again. I can now say that there is a slight difference between the two. Shocking, right? Really, the only difference that I could spot is in the lighting and the shading of certain parts of the levels. Different camera angles are used for certain cutscenes as seen with the official screenshots, and besides that, it looks like nothing else has changed. It appears that most of the focus of this port is all shadow, and it makes sense, since, again, it's the year of Shadow the Hedgehog. I mean, if we really wanted more, they'll most likely include the Casino Knights DLC, but I think that's a given, though. The release of Sonic Generations on the 3DS had different stages, such as Emerald Coast from Sonic Adventure and Water Palace from Sonic Rush. Side note, they need to bring back Blaze and Sonic Rush. What's taking them so long? They could also add extra music tracks from Sonic for Tears to play during stages, add extra but optional side missions. The most obvious addition to the base game is making Shadow playable in the modern stages. Quite literally the easiest addition to the game for a re-release. Playing all this aside though, I'm still very excited to play this again on the latest platforms as Sonic Generations is something I always go back and play, mod modded or not modded. But enough about Sonic Generations though time to talk about that shadow expansion i'll be honest i wasn't expecting this to be the sonic and shadow game that was rumored i'll also be honest by saying right away don't expect this to be a massive campaign featuring shadow at most expect this to be a two to four hour campaign with some replayability i will say though that i am surprised how much of the lore sonic team has been digging out of the closet in the past couple of years not to mention that ian flynn is actually involved with the writing for the expansion as well so that explains part of it either way i'm all for the direction sega and sonic team are taking this franchise right now and this is the best timeline we could possibly be in for the Sonic franchise, to be honest. What a time to be alive. Can we also mention that Black Doom is back? It has been... Hmm. In an attempt to do extensive research for this video, it seems that Sega is doing too much of a good job hiding those Sonata results. Jeez, I can't find this Shadow fanfix anywhere! Oh my god. Shadow's dedicated game, Shadow the Hedgehog, was released back in 2005. It has been 19 years since we last saw Black Doom. That reminds me. THIS GAME TURNS 20 NEXT YEAR?! Black Doom was kinda lost in time for a bit until Sonic Team decided to drag his corpse out of the graveyard and give him another round. 
In my opinion, he's very much an underrated villain in the Sonic series, and I'm glad he's gained another chance. While we're talking about characters from Shadow's game, let's talk location. It also appears that Westopolis is making a comeback as well. Wow, this really is the year of Shadow. Besides the return of underrated characters and stages, it appears as if Shadow is on that Jack Daniels and Coke prescribed by Doctor Strange. Not sure what that's about, but we can learn more about it by heading to the Steam page for the upcoming release. As always, links will be down below. When Shadow's old nemesis Black Doom re-emerges and threatens to take over the world, Shadow must journey into his own past, confront painful memories, face familiar foes, and unlock new powers to save the world and prove why he's known as the ultimate life form. Did you just say confront painful memories? Yes, another chance to see her get- Oh, oh, sorry, am I, am I not supposed to be excited? New powers? What else could there be left for Shadow to unlock? I mean, we already got the Chaos Control, Chaos Spear, and the Chaos Blast. My guess is that it could tie in with the electricity effect for the Sonic movie since that's the direction Sonic Team and Sega seem to be taking with Sonic's abilities now, so it would make sense for them to carry that over to Shadow as well. Face familiar foes? I mean, obviously we've already seen Black Doom, so we're off to a flying start. Eggman most likely will make an appearance as well, I think we all know that though. The one villain in question recently though, is Mephilus. Why fight it all? Why risk your life for those who will persecute you later? If the world chooses to become my enemy, I will fight like I always have. Sorry, I just had to put that clip in. That moment is just so epic. <laughs> Mephilus' reputation is something that is cherished by many fans. I personally am not the biggest fan of Mephilus, but I do respect his personality and his attitude as a character and as a, also as a villain in the series. Although he's not really a character, he's really just a, a like just a blob of liquid. He, that's pretty much all he is with a bunch of purple smoke. I truly believe that there is a massive potential for him to make a comeback this year, and it seems like Morio Kishimoto is open to the idea of him returning to the series at some point. Let's be honest, this expansion is the best way to reintroduce him into the franchise this year. As much as I may not like him in the series, we could definitely use him during the Year of Shadow. My question is, what role is Mephilus going to play if he ends up being in the expansion? If we're going to be revisiting the past events of Shadow's story, since we've already got Sonic 06 assets in the base game of Sonic Generations, although I'm not sure if that'll carry over since both Sonic and Shadow Generations may be running on separate engines. Looking at the trailer again, it doesn't look like it's a different engine than what it ran on in 2011. Shadow Generations looks like Hedgehog Engine 2, while the base game looks like it's still running on Hedgehog Engine 1. I might be wrong about that, but I just don't see a difference between this and this. Like, honestly, is there really much of a difference? Let me know if you see a difference in the comments below. But anyways, back to Mephilus. If we're going to be revisiting the past events of Shadow's story, since we've already got Sonic 06 and Sonic Generations, would we be revisiting past moments between Shadow and Mephilus? And if so, they could add to that with double what Sonic 06 did between Mephilus and Shadow, but less cringe and a bit more what Frontiers' dialogue did. Even though I may not like Mephilus as much as everyone else, I think he deserves a comeback this year. Honestly, I'm not I'm not saying BS right now. I'm, this is literally my, my thoughts. I'm not kidding. Mephilus' is, Mephilus, Mephilus is character... Mephilus is... Why is his name- why is his name so damn hard to say? Mephilus' character was okay in Sonic 06, but definitely has the potential to be fleshed out more with his personality and his abilities. Mephilus possibly being in the Shadow expansion could allow his character to be expanded in almost all aspects, but we'll find out if he's involved soon enough. Save the world. Taking a look back at the trailer, we see Sonic and Classic Sonic being buddy-buddy in the white void until Shadow walks in and says, Look at me. I'm so edgy and badass. Sonic wishes he could be like me. How come Shadow is also in the white void with them? Before Sonic and his friends were transported to the blank open world of time and space, they were throwing Sonic a birthday party. Where could Shadow be in the mix of this? That is, if his story takes place during the events of Generations. We don't know for sure when this expansion will take place. For all we know, it could take place after the events of Shadow's flagship game. Let's go over what we do know already about Shadow's place in the base game. We know that Sonic encounters him during a battle boss battle on the Ark, like in Sonic Adventure 2. This could be us revisiting the events of Sonic Adventure 2 during the Generation storyline from the perspective of Shadow. We might also finally get even more insight into what happened on the Ark when Maria was popped in the face. We also spot Shadow during the final boss battle of Generations, which could also mean that if this expansion takes place during Generations, Shadow reliving his dark past and memories would make sense if he also was sent to the same white void that Sonic and his friends were sent to. 
We're probably a darker void, not like a, a plain white void that looks more friendly. It's probably, you know, yeah, I don't know. I think that most likely this will take place during the events of Generations, because if we're going to be journeying into the past, confronting painful memories, and saving the world, it pretty much says, to me at least, that Shadow will be fixing his timeline that the Time Eater erased. I'll leave the discussion of the story here for another day in the future, but I want to leave it off with a comment from Takashi Izuka on the PlayStation blog post for this game. With Shadow's portion of the title, players will get to know him more as a character and understand his motivations. It will create the ultimate celebration of classic Sonic, modern Sonic, and Shadow gameplay that all fans will surely enjoy. And that's a page of Sonato Generations, folks! I'll almost likely make another video about Shadow in the future since now, after talking about this for however long this video is. For now, I'm gonna leave it here for this video because as I want to get out before the weekend. But do you think Mephiles will make a return? And do you think that this game will be better than whatever this dumpster fire was? <laughs> I don't even know what the heck this was. Or will it end up being better than Sonic Colors Ultimate? Let me know you guys' thoughts down below about what you think about Sonic X Shadow Generations. As always, thank you guys so, so much for watching the video. And if you happen to enjoy a little something in the video, make sure you guys leave a like down below as it always helps with the algorithm. And if you'd like to see even more Sonic and Nintendo content on the channel as well, make sure you subscribe and hit the bell so you don't miss out whenever I go live or whenever I upload a video. And anyways, I'm going to go find that fourth chaos and we'll push out the headshot cannon. And until then, I'll be seeing you guys in the next one. Peace out.